In the last video, I showed you guys how to set up Shots AN and also how to customize it with AI prompts. If you haven't yet seen that video, I'll put the link in the description. But in today's video, we're going to look at Ascertainity UI. Ascertainity UI is similar to Shots AN, so all you have to do is copy it and paste it into your code, customize it, and you're good to go. So let's see how to set it up in a Next.js project. You go to ui.ascertainity.com. If you check these components out, you can see once I put the mouse on it, it gives you this nice animation over here. So just go into components, click on components here, and you get to see a long list of components. So you might notice some of these from popular websites that we've all used. For example, the Google Gemini effect. This is what it's like if you scroll down the page here, you would see these lines over here and this animation begins to happen. So you guys can easily add this to your project. You can simply just come in here, go into your terminal, I run this npm command and this would install framer motion clsx and it would also install tailwind merge once you've done that you just need to set up your utils files which is similar to setting up a shatsyn project right and then you just need to copy this code from here and you already have all these props set up for you to call on whatever component you want if you open up the code you can see all the other props and types that are needed over here. You guys could just simply copy and paste it into your project. Click on the installation. We want to install Next.js, but I'm not using NPX. I'm using PNPM. And now this will set up a Next.js project for us. Let's change directory into this project. Let's open it up in VS Code. In VS Code, let's run the project. And you guys can see this is a full Next.js project and we'll just clean everything up and start adding our own components to this. Let's go back into the docs for Astenity. Click on add utilities. We just need to install these packages here. So I'll just copy this code, paste that here. That's installed. We just need to set up our utils file. Let's create a new folder, call it lib, and then let's create the file in it. Let's call this file utils.ts. And then you copy this code from here and paste it in. Cool, save that. The next thing we need to do is to set up our base Tailwind config file. We need to go into our Tailwind config file in the root directory over here. Let's add the dark mode, come down to the plugins. So we'll just copy that. And inside plugins array, we paste that in. Next, select this part of the code, and then you can add that plugin over here. Come up here, select this part of the code. Let's go to the top, paste that, cool. And let's try and add this one, 3D animated pin back into page.tsx. Let's get rid of all this. Return an empty div. It says we need to install this first. We've already done this. It says we need to set up our UTs files. We've already done this. And now it says we just need to create a component directory slash UI. And then we'll just put our UI component, which we'll call 3D-pin. It doesn't have to be this name. It could be anything you want to call it. If we use Shard CN, we wouldn't have to do all this folder creation and manual dragging and dropping. So let's create this folder ourselves. In the root directory, let's just quickly create component folders. So let's create another folder in the components directory. Let's call it UI. This is where we're going to now create our 3D dash pin. And like I said, you could name it anything you want, dot TSX. All right. Now, all we have to do is just come in here from the docs, copy this code and drop that in here. Don't feel bad about pasting someone else's code. Now that we have the source code, we can just come up here into our documentation, click on code. So what I like to do is I would just name this animated pin demo and uh, let's create a new component, but we want it in the component directory. In here is where we're just going to copy this component and paste that in. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's go back up here and see what the problem is. So it just says here, we don't have the path. So let's sort that out. We just set the path to it. And once we've done that, come back into the page components and let's add that in. We should be able to see this in our application. So there you go. If you wanted to change this title up here and you wanted it to be something else, you would need to customize the pin perspective component. And if you come in here, we can change those colors. So for example, if you wanted to change the color to rose 500, you can see we have this nice PG rose 500 color. And this is just Tailwind guys. So that's the beauty about it. Now there is one downside I would like to point out. The more animation you put 
on the screen, it takes out more resources. It causes your browser to load slowly. Let's try and add another one. So let's go to reveal effect. You can see when we put the mouse on it, you can see how it changes the color. So let's try and add this one to our own. So we've done all these three frame of motion, CLSX. We've done Tailwind Merge. So we just need this 3JS and we need React 3 Fiber. So once we install these packages, we've already set up our utils file. This is just in case you didn't. And then we just need to create this component that is called canvas-reveal-effect. So let's go into the UI directory, create a new file, and we'll just paste that name .tsx. And we're just going to copy this example and paste that in here. So while that has been installed, we still get this warning from TypeScript that says we don't have our types for 3JS. So let's install 3JS types. Cool. So now that error is gone, everything should work correctly. Let's scroll up to the top and we want to copy this entire code. But before we do that, so let's create Canva reveal effect demo, not in our UI, but in our components. All we need to do here, guys, just copy this code, paste that in. Let's save it and then let's import the Canva demo. And let's go back into the project. Now we've added these examples into our project. If I make this bigger, it comes to the sides. So this is 100% responsive. So let's create a new file. All right. So we'll go into our components folder in the UI directory, create a new file called this file typewriter effect.tsx. Going to copy the whole thing and we're just going to paste that in here. We're just going to create a new file. Let's call it typewriter demo.tsx. And in here, we're just going to copy this code. So let's copy that. Let's paste that in. Let's go back to the top. We had to just add that path to our component. And now we can easily change the text. So whatever text we have here has to be an item in this object. All right. And then we just check that out. And then we have our typewriter effect demo. So if you come back into the docs, let's look for tailwind buttons. And in tailwind buttons, you can see we have quite a few buttons. So we want to install the React element to JSX string, that library. Just run the installation command. Let's customize our Tailwind file because we need to customize our Tailwind file to add custom keyframes to it. In the theme here, let's extend animation. So once we've named the animation right here after animation, we'll just add our keyframe animation. So we want the shimmer because that's why we had to do all the animation. So let's copy the shimmer. Let's paste the button here. You can see we now have the shimmer button with the shimmer animation. Shimmer. If we refresh the page, you get this nice animation. Look at that. Let's try and add a vortex here. We want this kind of home page where we have this, you know, nice effect going on here. Let's run the installations. What we need is this simp noise. And this should install simplex noise library. And we're going to create a new UI file. Let's call it vortex.tsx. We're just going to copy that code from here and paste that in here. Now that we have all that set up, we just need to go into the top here. Let's copy this code. So we'll go into the component directory. Let's create a new file. Again, you guys know the drill. Let's call it vortex demo.tsx and paste that demo in. All right. This needs to be a client component back in the home page. We import the vortex demo. All right, cool. So just like that, guys, you guys can basically do anything on the front end. Is this something that you would like to use for your next project? If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a like. And if you would like to get more videos like this, then please subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.